until I had to turn mine off too. This is July 20th, 2015 Parks and Rec Advisory Committee meeting. Uh, we have a quorum tonight. Uh, before we get started, a couple uh, announcements or things you want to talk about. First of all, we have a new Parks and Rec employee, Ms. Laura. You want to say hello? Wave for the camera. There you go. And uh, just remember to keep uh, A.C. Davis and Candace Bounds family, both of them um, family members are having some serious surgeries going on right now. So uh, please remember me in your prayers. From there, we'll jump right into old business and we'll talk about the uh, Veterans Memorial Wall update. David? We are supposed to be having a meeting with the uh, architects on Wednesday at 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. Um, at the Codes building. Uh, AC, myself, uh, Bruce, Garland, Kyle, um, anybody that we're going to try to avoid what we had happen at the playground. We're going to try to get everybody involved at the front end. So the Briggs and Maloney is going to take over, do us a couple sketch drawings or something. Hopefully when we get um, one, two, three drawings, we'll bring them back to you guys and kind of, you know, let you take a look at them. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, you want to give an update. Um, one of the board members uh, was asking about Rolling Thunder. And they were here at our, our Mayor and Alderman meeting about two weeks ago. Um, just what kind of role are they going to play? And it seems to be like they were very much on board. Well, I know several years ago they were grand marshals at um, Old Timers Day. Right. Um, the guy that got up and spoke, I have known him probably since I was 15 years old. And through the years, he's just gotten more involved with it. So I knew he did a bunch of benefit stuff with those guys. So when this wall came up, um, we wanted to get his input on it. So we just contacted him, you know, because he had done a memorial for Smyrna High School. And then the next day he met with us, um, kind of went over a few ideas because he had some involvement with memorials before. And then the very next day he got in touch with us and he already had the concrete donated, um, the labor donated for the wall, and just kind of started snowballing from there. So that's why... We went ahead and the sketch drawings you guys saw at the workshop, um, that was just something we had put together to kind of give a visual. Um, that's not the finished product by no means. We're going right. to send that out and, and let the city's architect take it. Well, I've heard a lot of really good things about that group. The uh, Rolling Thunder? Yes. Yeah, and they are everywhere, and it's not just here. I've heard locally. about them from yeah. New Jersey. I have some family members up there that lost yeah. a couple of loved ones. and. Um, they speak very highly of that group. Um, and especially the gentleman that spoke at the board meeting, very passionate. Um, if, if we get their involvement, it won't fail. They won't let it, but you know, they won't let it fail. I'm glad they're on board. Yeah, me too. Uh, that was a good contact we made. So just once again, for the public, I think we brought it up at the board of Marin Alderman, but the reason why we're getting our engineering firms and our architects is so we want this to not just be one phase but multiple phases and we want to make sure it's designed right for years to come um, to honor our vets is that correct pretty much it is and with that pad being existing right there we don't want to start building something on that and then not be able to hold the weight and then six years down the line that concrete crack so i think everybody is on the same page where well, we're going to have to build an additional footer around it so that's where we want to bring the architect in and the engineers just to make sure everything's going to be structurally sound before we move forward. Very wise. Good deal. Anyone else have any other comments? No. Did they find out anything about the price of the bricks, what they were going to charge, or is that still well, up for debate? I think what's probably going to happen, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, is um, Parks and Rec is going to get the, all the numbers, who they find. There may have to be some bid process going on with some of it. Um, and then... Um, at the last meeting, they spoke about maybe charging just a little bit more just for upkeep in uh, case yeah. there's any, but, but nothing where it's going to be gouging anyone. It's, right. um, but again, there's a lot more goes into it. Number one, uh, you're going to have to manifest where each brick is. Let's say there's any vandal, you know, right. vandalization That's, or whatever. So whether it be in some kind of portfolio or whatever, and then if there's any, anything else that goes on up there, just being able to take care of it. Yeah, and I don't think we have discussed as a department or even as a board what what the price what price point we're going to set those bricks at and there may be some fluctuation in what they're saying they're, they're selling for now and what we can get them for and tom had brought up uh talking about maybe buying some in bulk 
you know, if the city purchased 200, 500 in advance, do we get a bigger discount? Right. So all of those are questions that we haven't had answered yet. And even if you did purchase, say, 500, I don't, there's so much gray area there right now because I don't really know how that would work because do you call, you sell two bricks today, do you call and say, hey, I need two bricks engraved? It seems like that wouldn't be uh, no, that's efficient be on their end. Yeah. So a, a lot of that is still, you know, up in sure. up in the air. Okay. But that'll be brought back to us maybe our, by our next meeting or, you know, pretty soon, right? I mean, it'll come back to this board as far as when you set the price and all. I do know that the, the flagpoles are in. They went ahead and ordered the three flagpoles. They came in. We do have spots on that pad marked for those three flagpoles, but I think we're going to wait um, until we meet with the architect on Wednesday before we move forward with with even trying to get those installed. Did they and decide on the height on those? I know that was... I think the main flagpole is going to be 25 foot, and the other two are going to be 20. Okay. <clears throat> and I, I don't know if, like I said, as far as that wall goes, I don't, this may be something we can go ahead and get on immediately. I mean, we could put the flagpoles in if there's no other changes. If, if the architect says, yeah, go ahead, you're good with the flagpoles. The only issue with that at this point would be getting those lit up at night because if you fly a flag overnight, it's going to have to be lit up. Yeah. So then we'd have to get electric there. So Winter. even if we got the poles in, I don't know how long it would be before we could get a flag up there. Has anybody consulted with any electrical companies or anything about getting that taken care of or getting mm -hmm. bids on it? Well, we talked to uh, the electrical con company that has the contract for the city, Seals Electric, and he he led us to kind of believe, you know, that if he would do some of the labor or if not all of it, I'm sure the city would have to purchase the supplies. But then we also let him know that our guys are going to be available to him to whatever it takes to keep the cost lower. Um, if it takes four or five of our, of our guys out there for a week helping him out, as long as we can save money for the city, then, then that's what we're going to do. Okay. I'm just anxious to see this get going. I am too. I and I think once the ball does get rolling on it a little further, there's going to be a whole lot of interest in it. And that's why we don't want to jump the gun and say, yeah, we've waited this long. Let's throw something up quickly. Right. When if, you want to do it I mean, right. we've waited this long. What's a little longer going to Make hurt, sure you know? everything's done right. Make sure it's going to last for many, many decades. I think it's, it's very feasible that we could have something in place by Veterans Day, and that's what's November the 11th. Yep. I think it, that's very possible to do that. That's our goal anyway, get okay. the flags up before that and then have something to look at by Veterans Day. Absolutely. Good deal. Thank you. We'll move into new business and we'll talk about National Night Out. While wow, that is PD and emergency services, I know uh, Parks pretty much has a hand in it as well. So that is, uh, is that a week from it's Tuesday? It's Tuesday, August the 4th. August the 4th. 6 o'clock? It is. Is it 5? It is six, 5 or 6 o'clock. I don't have the time. Yeah, I'm throwing you under there. Uh, we'll have to get back with you on the time. I don't. It may be six. Um, Kathy, do you know it's five? Five o'clock. What night is August four? Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. On, on National Night Out, had uh, they probably y'all probably already got everything already sewed up and and um, planned out. Are they going to have any type type of booths maybe with the police department talking about? Um, neighborhood watches because i know there's a lot of people that are interested in learning how to start one up i believe um kathy you be can you answer this i believe the last few years they've had that or, or uh, they, yes they, they will have a booth a, a police booth they'll actually have several of them one that will showcase their swat team and then they have um you'll look for sheree robertson she also does all the um neighborhood watch so she has all that information and beyond National Night Out. She's also available anytime a neighborhood invites her to come and set one up. Okay, thank you. Okay, and then. I noticed there's no food for no hot dogs. Is that correct? The, the I, don't, I know they've had. I don't know what their food dogs. situation is. Last year we the 
past all the years I've been here, they have served. Right. I believe you guys cooked, the scouts cooked one year. No one said anything to me. Well, I know box, last year, box 100 above. Uh, Garland and I somehow got delegated to cook. Um, I wouldn't mind handing that off to somebody else this year. Uh, but I haven't heard what they're doing as far as I'm sure they'll have something. That'll no be a one, no one's free. contacted Box 100. No one's contacted me, and I was, I've been doing it for years. Right. How um, about corn dogs in microwaves? Less heat. Well, <laughs> Less mess. We can uh, get in touch with Cherie tomorrow. I think, I think our officer Robertson has talked with uh, the chief of Box 100. They've talked a little bit, and I think that you're probably just waiting for that information to get disseminated out to you. Okay. Because Officer Robertson did say that Box 100 had signed up already. Oh, had they? Yeah. I, I'm not aware of that. She'll just she'll just need to disseminate it. Okay. All right. So if they have all the info, then I don't need to say anything to. I think if anyone wants to contact uh, Officer Free Robertson. Laura, um, yeah. They uh, she'll have. I think she's the one who's kind of spearheading the whole thing. So. Uh, any. Because at the last meeting, she didn't bring anything up about we being on time to help cook hot dogs or anything. So we have one meeting. This is July. So our next meeting is that, that Monday. It's the first Monday of August, and this is on Tuesday. So it's going to be uh, yeah, I agree. What, what kind of, uh, where do they get the equipment to cook all this stuff on? Previously, I, we used to get a cooker from the uh, rescue unit, and I cooked all the hot dogs, and I got the Boy Scouts involved and helped handle it out. And then once the Box 100 came in, we cooked some hot dogs at the concession stand and already had them all made up, folded and everything, Ready to go. put them in a big... Uh, with this being July 20th, and it's going to be on August 4th, that's just a short time. If we don't have anything in place, if we can't oh, no, 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 do we need a contingency plan? No, 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 no. Let's, let's go back. This is run solely by emergency services. Now, Parks and Rec has always played a hand in it because it's at the park. So Yeah, we have I, set up. with. We're kind of like on standby for whatever the police department needs if they need tents chairs, tables, they need help with traffic control. Um, if they do need help cooking with whatever or providing um, drink coolers, that's kind of like, we're kind of like auxiliary. They spearhead it, um, but it is held in the park. So anything that we can help them out with, we always okay. do. Because I'm good at serving. I'm not good at cooking right. flames and stuff. Yeah, I brought it up here just again, as this is going to hit the TV, I believe Thursday night. I wanted everyone to know that what it is going on and, and just to get a little information about it. But I'm, I'm certain by now the plans have been more than laid uh, out uh, by PD. But uh, if you need anything, would you give us a call and let us know if you need anything? And if somebody wanted to call the volunteer, who would they get in contact with? Please um, Parks and Rec. You guys could call the Park and Rec office. Is it 7936? Thank you. I don't know that number. But yeah, I, I think they they pretty much have that. Every city, like every department in the city, generally puts up a tent. Parks will have a tent, library, public works. Um, I think the Little Miss will have a tent. So everybody's pretty much well represented. And it, it usually goes off without a hitch, really. It's just, um, since it is in the park, um, we just wanted to make note of it as another event that, that takes place there. Do we need to do anything? as a you can come out and enjoy the, the evening. Uh, we won't put you to work, but you're more than welcome to come. Okay. Um, it's a good turnout. It's a it's a good crowd, um, and it's a safe place for kids, families to bring their children that night. Um, and I think that's kind of what it's about, the community coming together and uh, showing support for each other. Okay. So, yeah, we'd be more than happy to have you guys. All right. Thank you. I think, Julie, the next one I will direct at you. Um, Howl the Moon 5K, would that be appropriate for you, Dan? Yes, sir. Um, we have moved it this year. Instead of August, we're doing October the oh, okay. 16th. That's a Friday night. Okay. Uh, the police uh, did the run for Tay last year, so we wanted to make sure to keep September open in case they, they did do that again this year. Okay. 
Um, it kind of fits the theme October and Howl at the Moon, maybe. Sure. So we decided to move it to October. So, but that's always a fun one. So everything would be probably set up the same, um, just a different date. I actually think it's a great idea. I mean, it was always fun running in the heat, but you never knew. I remember one year it was, gosh, close to 90 some degrees, even when no, at eight o'clock. No, it was miserable. Hot. It was awful hot. So yeah, we don't want anybody getting sick. That's right. Um, Okay, well, we'll push, we'll move that out. But again, um, are, are we doing online signups right now? We um, do, and we're no. not doing online signups. Not um, do we've never year? done that in the past. Um, that's something we may need to look into. But okay. we have a good turnout. Um, you can mail that into the park uh, or in person. But the uh, forms are not available just yet. Okay, and uh, Striders, or we're going to get that group that comes in that actually with the chips and the the time and all that. We've been going with uh, Rabbit Road Racing the past couple of years, and they're real similar. Okay. They do it in the bib, uh, the timing. And, and do they do um, advertising? Like uh, They will put it on their website. Very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. Anything else about that? Um, when will you have forms available? And here in the, the next uh, Here in the next few weeks, we'll have those. Uh, generally, prices run. Um, $25 if you register um, before the deadline, and then last minute signups are $30. Now, if we keep that the same this year, I'm not sure, but uh, probably. Okay. All right. We'll move to number three um, Old Timers Festival update. And I think there's been some movement as far as the entertainment this year. Um, have we got anything? Confirmed yet with the I don't, Willis's? Well, AC thing? has been out all last week. I think they're still in. They're trying to iron out the details of their rider, maybe. Okay. Um, Kathy, do you have any more info I on don't. the Willis clan? But I know it's on their website that they do have Laverne penciled in for that night. So unless something drastically changes, um, that'll probably um, take place. When do you all want to talk about the Willis clan? And, and I think it's, uh, what's the name of the... TV network that they're with, um, TLC. TLC. Uh, you want to talk about, a little bit about them and what that may bring to the barn? Eleven kids, twelve kids. I think they have twelve kids. Yeah, and they're a family of musicians. They all play different instruments, so it's basically just them on stage. Um, they do a lot of cover songs. Um, they do have an album out that, you know, it's probably. I don't want to talk like I know for sure when it came out. Um, it's probably been in stores three months, maybe. That's just a guesstimation. Um, but they are on TLC. They do have a show. Um, we expect it to be a family-friendly night also. And they may bring the TV show, which would be nationally televised. So uh, I guess that's not confirmed yet, but that's a possibility, which would be give Laverne, put them on, put us more on the map, and uh, be great. Um, Anything else? I know we're moving it back a week to the 19th, September 19th now, in order to have them there. I think we're still pretty much, we may have had one or two vendors or booths that have dropped out because they couldn't keep that date. But I think, and you may, Julie will know this, the other musical entertainment we had, I think they're still able to rebook. We do still have Us Two and Him, which is a local band. They consider themselves a, a comedy country type act, um, novelty type songs. And we have the um, gentleman that came last year with the animals. That was a huge hit. Um, he's able to come back. Awesome. What kind of animals? Um, you know, he brings a different, it depends on what show you want. Um, in the past, he's brought a kangaroo and uh, snakes and turtles and things such as that. So he's got a good variety. It's all, he's a very, very entertaining. It was it's a lot of educational as well. So it's not really a performance. Mm -hmm. it's really like an educational type thing. And the pageant. Anybody want to talk about the pageant? We, we, actually, we set the pageant date for August 22nd, and it's a little bit earlier than usual because um, we didn't want to keep, compete with opening the fall ball opening day, and we didn't want to compete with the, the Play for Tay tournament because I really think that affects the attendance. But we do have our baby boy hats that are in. I like them. <laughs> they came in today. Oh, cute. Um, registration is very affordable, $25 for the Miss Laverne pageants, which is Little Miss, Young Miss, Junior Miss, and Miss, and then $20 for the baby show. And applications can be online. 
They, they are online. Okay. Yes. And they can pick them up here at City Hall. Or they're right out here in the lobby. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And what is your um, deadline for applicants? August 17th, 4.30. Yep, Mr. Bob, anyone else got anything on the time? No, I don't have anything. Um, I did have a couple questions for you in regards to old timers. Um, um, and this is just because this is the type of thinker I am. Um, uh, the rider is not worked out in regards to the entertainment. So what happens if that entertainment falls through? Are we thinking about that or any plans? Um, I think we're, we're going to have to make that work somehow because we are running out of time. And once this goes back before the board, then if we can't get it hammered out with the Willis clan, I'm afraid we're probably going to have to fall back maybe on some more local entertainment because that's pretty much our only option at this point. And for a bigger name act, um, I think we could probably get some entertainment in here if this did fall through. Um, it may not have the name recognition, but at that, at that point, we wouldn't have a choice but to, to try to find something else. But I think that they did look at the writer prior to making the recommendation. And it is not a hard rider not to work with. The criteria isn't much. And, and, and just so we're clear, we're not sitting here, um, you know, a few, little time left and saying, what are we going to do? We had a big name act. Um, but like we had in the past, it's, the rider came back. And David, if you want to touch on some of the things, but they were outrageous. They, they wanted each person wanted their own dressing room, which we know we don't have at, at, at uh, Veterans Memorial Park. They wanted certain kinds of M&Ms and certain colors. That means you had to sit there and pluck th things out. You just, was it the Rolling Stones? It, no, it wasn't the Rolling Stones. Oh, okay. But, but, uh, just... Yeah, but it was, it was uh, again, it was, I'm, I'm being facetious here with some That's of this, crazy. but I, I guess the point is it's something we could not do. Um, and and uh, they would not budge on, on that at all just to try, you know, we went back and forth several times with their attorney, our attorney, and uh, I think Julie and AC actually met with them, correct? Not too long ago. And David as well. Mm -hmm. So am I right, pretty much? So we've had things in, in planned. It's just that we there were some things we could not meet um, on their end. So do you want to add or? I think add hopefully at all? the Willis clan's uh, rider and contract will be more simplified, um, and it may may be more doable in a, in the short amount of time that we have to do. Um, so hopefully we won't hit any snags both sides. Our director and their representatives seem to think that there won't be any issues. So unless something comes up unexpected, I think we'll be able to move forward with that. And with this being Music City USA, we all know musicians, so we well, can pull and the, something together. Well, and the, the price that, the price you're having to pay for entertainment for, for a city our size, it, it's kind of hard to, to lock that out of a budget because until you do start looking for acts, you actually don't know how much that is um, because you think you can get an act from the 80s or the 90s for a relatively low price, but they're all bringing a pretty good amount of money. And then my other question in regards to this, is this going to be the trend for the future of Old Timers Festival, getting a big name act? Is this the direction? Well, I think we had talked about if this was going to be our shot, if this doesn't work out, then we'd have to rethink how we move forward in the future. Um, that's kind of like we were all banking on this to draw a good crowd because our crowds in the past for the main entertainment haven't been that large. Um, so, but we were spending, we were still spending quite a bit of money for entertainment, but the results you were getting under the tents weren't there. So we had some money left over in the budget from last year that was allotted to this year. I don't know if how that rolled over or if we said, okay, we're just gonna take that money instead of taking it out of this year's budget and try to get a bigger known act where we can draw a crowd. Um, Cause we, we as a park department put a whole week's worth of work building up to that day to set up. And then we spend another week tearing down. And it's kind of disheartening for us as a department and a group to put all that effort into a main act and there's five people under the tent. So, and four of those are park employees. So 
hopefully we can go in a different direction and, and it will work out. Um, but I know it has been discussed that this is pretty much our shot to take it and you know, see what we can make happen this year. And I think that's, that's pretty much what we've done right along. We've been trying things out, some things uh, we like, some things the community liked, some things they didn't. And we brought some things back. So um, we'll keep trying to, to get it right and make it better each year. So. Um, and one last thing about the Thomas uh, Festival. Um, in, in the future, I've heard a lot of uh, people in the community say how much they're going to miss that carnival this year. Um, and I just wanted to uh, let you know I've heard that from several that are kind of um, disappointed that we're not going to have it. So I just wanted to offer that information also to the and department. I don't think that has been ruled out totally in the future either. Um, finding a good reputable carnival that's going to co actually come in and do what they say they're going to do has kind of been our issue in the past and then after a certain um, time at night the family element disappears from it so th those have been several of the issues and I, I'm not real sure anybody's a, a definitely opposed to not trying that again because you do have to have some kind of family entertainment um, whether it be a carnival or bounce houses or something to keep the kids occupied That brings us down to staff comments. Um, anything that you all want to touch on or bring us up to date on? Mr. Gohart, you got anything? Summer camp or anything? Else? I've okay. got a couple dates, which you've already mentioned, and some of these may fluctuate August 4th, National Night Out. Um, Labor Day weekend, September 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th is the Play for Tay tournament. Um, we will be hosting that this year in the park, and that is a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday tournament. Um, Old Timers Day, September 19th, and I have, I'm going to touch on July 4th. I don't know if any of you guys were able to make it out. It did not go as well as we had planned. What was that? July, July 4th. 4th. We set up all day long, had a few sporadic showers. Um, about the time the band was getting ready to take the stage and make welcoming comments, the bottom fell out of it, and it rained constantly until we left that night. Um, but we still did have fireworks. Um, the fireworks show turned out great. Um, we just wish the rest of the evening would have been as well as the fireworks. Can't control the weather, though. But I want to tell you, but I want to tell you how many people that I've spoken to that just were thrilled, even though you know, despite the weather, that they still went on. I know down my road, people were lined up under tents. They set up tents just so they could watch it, and mm -hmm. I and I've heard that that's happened all over all over Laverne, at least where you could see it from. Mm -hmm. Laverne so uh, good job to kind of get it get it get it in any way because uh, you're, you're not kidding like about six o'clock um, I don't think we've had that strong a rain mm -hmm. and it didn't let up and the band hung around for a while um, but we didn't we just didn't catch a break the lightning detection system went off about a quarter till six and halfway through the light the fireworks it finally shut off and even with that we were still getting rain my son said the fireworks and his friends said the fireworks were absolutely wonderful 20 we timed it out at 23 minutes which is a pretty long show yeah. um, and we outdone Shamerna by a long shot yeah and that's what we have heard the last two years um and i think nashville show maybe lasted 32 minutes for 23 minutes for a, a city our size is pretty impressive yeah and you know david i think when i sat with uh i think it was ac and we spoke to pyro shows and we set up the contract up I think we may be in our last year, or um, I could be wrong as far as our contract. I think they only said they were going to do 14, 15 minutes, but each year they'll give us 19, 20, and you said this year 23 minutes, so um, that's awesome. So. A um, couple other things. Football practice for the uh, Kids Football League begins tonight. Um, they're utilizing the park. And then on August the 30th, which is a Sunday, um, we are having a car show in Laverne. It'll be a car show in the back section of the park. Who's sponsoring that? Uh, I knew you were going to ask me Kiwana that. Kiwanis Club? It is, hang on, one of our guys found a flyer. It is Dub Fest of Middle Tennessee. I think, do you have a gentleman's name? He's just a vintage park group. I want to say Daniel Edwards, but I'm not real sure. To the times. Um, Ma'am? What are the times? Um, the times are, the set, they're setting up at 8 o'clock. The gates open at 10. The judging starts at noon. Um, 
and the awards presentation is at 3 p.m. What date is that? It is Sunday, August the 30th. And this is our first endeavor into something like this. Um, we wanted to do it for a while. Um, so these, uh, these car shows bring quite a crowd. So we hope that goes off without a hitch. Will there be vendors or do they? I don't think they have any vendors set up at this time. I think they've inquired about that. Um, that'd be a decision that our director would have to make. I know there used to be some type of a car show up near the library years ago, maybe a decade ago or something, where they had all these really neat, classic old cars. And, and hopefully that's what that we're looking at what, now. Um, it was a big crowd all day long. I remember and, that. And those car shows do bring, you know, they have the big one in um, Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge every year, which we that's lake, huge. We had a lake house up in Mount Juliet that they had a bunch of the people that were entering or doing these car shows around Tennessee, they would lease that big old house out and that whole house would be, I've got pictures of the, all these fantastic, beautiful old cars in mint condition. Well, with this being our first endeavor in it, I think we're trying to keep it, you know, somewhat contained. Um, hopefully in the future it'll grow because th there's big business in that. People love coming out to a car show. Wish we had some big restaurants here in Laverne so they could eat there when they come. We're working on that too. Good. <laughs> um, guys, any other comments? Staff, anything else you want to add? Mr. Bob? No. Good. I think Park's uh, doing a great job. I see you guys out working hard every day, cutting the lawn, making our city look beautiful. Absolutely. I commend you on that. You guys do a good job. Deb B? B? That's why I said B, because I had two Debs in next year. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused to having a couple of Debbies and Debras over here. Um, I just wanted to welcome the new member of the Parks and Recreation Department. And uh, Laura, it's a pleasure to have you here. And uh, we look forward to working with you and getting to know you. Deb H. Welcome, Laura. Hope you love it here and stay. Um, I would just like to comment that eventually I hope this board can, or this committee can um, try to work out something with parks and with the Mayor Alderman Board to where we can find something that's not very expensive that we can help our teens, our wayward teens get involved with, especially in the summer months, so that. I know, agree. Crime isn't so bad. I think that's something we've talked about, and Bob, it's about time to say what you always say every meeting. <laughs> Bob wants a community center, yeah, which sure would do. give him a place to, to go. Um, but yeah, it's something we've talked on, and we absolutely need to do it. So, yeah, um, something, something, even if it's one night on the weekend, you know, and, you know, have parents or somebody kind of monitor it, along with maybe somebody from Parks and Rec, you know just even a few hours. I mean, in, in her, I grew up in Hermitage back before many of you were born, and um, we had something that was actually, that was shared with Hermitage in Old Hickory um, called Teen Town. And I can tell you this, they kept a lot of us out of trouble. Our parents would drop us off, or our friends and their parents, or somebody would always give us a ride over there and drop us off, and it was just a really fun, safe place for people to go. And they don't have anything much here unless, you know, and a lot of kids can't get rides. Maybe they've got single parents. Maybe their parents can't take them and drop them off at Smyrna Skate Rink or movie theaters or something like that. If we just had something where even, you know, their friends are going and they can kind of tag along with their family and, and go. Any, any ideas at all? Has anybody talked about anything? That's one of your things, too. You want to get something going for the youth. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, years ago, the old, well, it was a rescue squad building at one time, and then it became um, CID, and then it became, now it's a senior center. But I believe at one time, didn't that start out as a community center years and years ago? I started out in a cookie store. Started out a cookie store that in public works. Was it, wasn't it, was it ever a community center? Mm -hmm. Center is now. now. We did Girl Scouts back there for a long time. I know it was. Uh, I could 
could have been when it was rescued. I'm not sure, but I know as a child we did Girl Scouts there. Well, when I was a member uh, for a few years a uh, while back, I know that they did uh, let Boy Scouts and different people like that use it. And I know recently for Halloween, they had a big Halloween party that was just a lot of fun that they invited, uh, you know, the whole community was welcome to come and join in and stuff like that. That was for little kids, though. Like I said, there's so much for little kids, nothing for the big kids. And, and I, I really wish that there would be something that didn't cost an arm and a leg that we could come up with you know, for them. Even on Halloween, maybe do a teen party for Halloween. Something like that. Keep them from egging our cars. The price <laughs> of eggs going, going through the roof, you know. <laughs> That's something that we have talked about. Um, not egging the cars, but uh, right. we, we've talked about uh, Halloween, maybe doing a, a, zam a zombie walk or something like that. So maybe uh, at a, when we, our next workshop, we'll try to see what we can get going. I, and we also talked about maybe a movie in the park. I don't know if we're planning on doing that again. Um, I know we did it around Christmas last year, I believe, or right before Christmas. And we are also looking at dates for, we haven't given up on music in the park. We're looking at dates. Now we're trying to find an act that will, will fit into the date that we kind of got penciled in. I did want to say one thing in regards to music in the park and movies in the park, that that is uh, uh, one thing I would like to see the Parks and Recreation Department look into. When I look at other uh, uh, municipalities within Rutherford County, they have etched in dates. I think there was five movies in the parks and five music in the parks scheduled for the town of Smyrna and ongoing uh, the city of Murfreesboro and granted they're a much larger municipality, but they had a, a, a whole bunch scheduled. So um, in the future, I, the one movies in the park that I went to, I had so much fun. That football field was packed that I went to. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. I heard a lot of good things. So um, I, I would like to see more of those types of events uh, planned in the community. And I heard a lot of good things about why don't we, why aren't we having any more? Sure. So I agree. And, and if you remember what happened that night, not to keep this going, but same thing that almost had, that happened at, at Fourth of July. It rained maybe three o'clock in the afternoon till right before six, mm -hmm. and, and people weren't certain if it was still going, but we. We still kicked it off, and gosh, I, I, I would dare to guess how many people were there, but the football field was packed. Mm -hmm. um, so let's keep working on it. I mean, here's, here's the thing. Um, you know, a lot of people want to see things done tomorrow. I do too, but the reality is it's probably not going to happen. But let's everybody keep coming with your ideas at our workshops, and let's, let's kick it to the Parks Department and see if, they, if they're on board with it. Um, some things are going to have to come before the mayor and aldermen. Um, you know, just to see if that's what, you know, just get their approval. But uh, let's just keep working at it. And, and you know, if, if you just even look in the last four or five years, every year there's been something. Lake Forest Playground opened. I mean, we, you go back to 2010, we didn't have our own fireworks. And now we, we people say it's better than, than our, our neighbors. So uh, we could talk about the Christmas parade. That wasn't around. We're, we're adding something each year. And let's, this year we're, we're doing the, we, we put a, a, brought a farmer's market in. We're also talking now about the Veterans Memorial Wall. So, it, I, again, I know there's so many needs, the community center, uh, something for the teens, but let's just keep working and plugging away and, and we'll get there. And, uh, but I, I think what you, what you uh, idea you brought up is, I think everybody agrees with the fact we, we've got to get something for our, I would say, young, young, younger kids to teenage level. You are aware of Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts all open up here in the room. So there's, there's a lot of things already that kids can be involved in. A but parents have to be involved in that too. The only thing is that I think a lot of the teens that we're seeing getting into trouble are teens that don't have the parental involvement to begin with. Right. And are pretty much letting them you know. Do whatever they want to do, yeah. Well, because they can't monitor them, won't or can't monitor them. And, you know, and as, as a city, you know, we pay for it, you know, I'm sorry, by vandalism and other things like that. And if there's some way that we could do something inexpensively, like movies in the park, music in the park, uh, you know, things. I know the library is doing something I noticed on, let me, last Thursday night where they were actually uh, doing something with some kind of Mario games, 
And um, mm -hmm. I think, you know, but, but I only found out it by accident because I had to go up there to pick something up and I only found out about that by accident because everybody doesn't get on these websites and find out, you know, what's going on in the city or watch Channel 3. And, and I saw that and I'm thinking, wow, I wish I'd have known that a little bit earlier. You know, my son and I know some few other people that would have liked to have known about it. But um, if, we could, if we could even do something, I mean, movies in the park, how hard is that to do? Is it expensive? It is. I mean, it's doable. We did it last year. We do plan on doing it again closer to fall. We have to work around ball tournaments and different events in the park. And that is something else with a contract, so that would have to be worked out as well and approved by the board. Okay. But it's definitely already um, in the works. And, I mean, even if they have something like if they made use of something like the Civic Center or some building uh, where they could have it like a get-together for for some of them to do something like game night or anything like that, you know. Do kids not play games anymore? Teens don't play games? <laughs> Probably not, unless they're electronic, yeah, yeah video games. Do you, do you mind if I speak to something that's kind of related to kids not having an adult in their life? Deborah Balthard, Deborah B and I, <laughs> went to an organizational meeting, well it wasn't organizational, it was a, a meeting of need for Big Brothers, Big Sisters. And I can't remember, but it was like 14 boys have been on a waiting on list waiting for a list. year. Uh -huh. And they, they had four girls on a waiting list and have been on the list for four months. And those are kids here in Laverne. Mm -hmm. We can't even find big brothers, big sisters to volunteer, you know, to, to help these kids out. And they're asking one hour a week with a one-year commitment. And to have that many kids you know, looking for a big brother or big sister, I, I was shocked. And I think we ended up signing maybe four up from the city, but if anyone wants any information on Big Brothers or Big Sisters, you can contact the Chamber of Commerce here or City Hall, and, and Deborah V and I could help give people that information. 16 boys for a year, they've been waiting. Wow. How, what are their ages? Uh, anywhere, uh, school aged. I think it was like kindergarten through probably mid-teens, wouldn't you say, mm -hmm. Deborah? Yeah. I know that when my son was, uh, younger when he was a kid and when he was a teen when we we moved away for about three or four years but then we came back but while he was a kid and a preteen we had a lot of kids his age a year older a year under that didn't have anything to do because their parents worked and weren't right. there and we had that extra bedroom we turned into a game room and playroom and that's where they came and you know and sometimes well, we, we, we fed them actually, dinner and everything, and it kept them out of trouble. And I can I, say I those that, kids. Right. I put that on our webpage, the city webpage, about Big Brothers, Big Sisters looking for volunteers. And it, and it kind of broke my heart a little bit because one of the ladies said, we're on that list waiting, you know. But there's a, a need right there for volunteers right now. They do have to go through a screening process. They have a background check done um, because the children are protected. And they have the checks, you know, the people that check on how it's going. It makes a difference in these kids' it lives, does. and I can say that because I know that every single one of the, the boys that used to come to our house and hang out and eat dinner and snacks and play games and, you know, have a safe place to hang out till their parents came home, every one of them is either in college or working for a company or have their own company. Well, my son and another one have their own company, but they're, they're all successful young adults, and they're, you know, from 20 to 23 years old. And, and I think it makes a difference. It really yes, I agree. does make a difference. Yeah. It's a big difference. And, and let's do this. I mean, again, we have a need. We have many needs, but let's, let's try to define them, and let's try to find what we can do short-term and long-term and, and keep working at it. But uh, you're 100% right as far as that goes. Um, Anything else? Just want to clarify some things because of the last meeting that we had. It was my first meeting, and just so I, I want to make sure that every, you know, I don't want to break any rules or anything like that. Now, and as far as anything that we're working on or talking about, do we, are we able to go out in our community or, or things and ask questions and find out yes, information That's and bring question. it back and uh, bring it back to present it to the board? Uh, absolutely. Or, or is that just up for one, does, I mean, who does that? Well, How, are we not able to gather information and, and look for information to help us speed things along? And absolutely. Uh, he, let, let's, I'm glad you brought that up. I think it, it's, um, 
to de define what we are, we are an advisory committee. Right. We, we sit, we meet, um, and we've only done this the last four or five years. We meet at a workshop one month and then we go to televise the next month. Um, during our workshops, we, again, we sit around and, and everybody's input is welcome, even when it's contrary or opposite. But we, we try to, because we think, of the, you know, the more input we can get, the closer we can get to where we want to be. At the end of the day, it goes back to the department, and then from the department, it comes back to the mayor and alderman. Right. And, I, and I'm just going to bring this up, and I have the mayor sitting over there, but, you know, the farmer's market was an example. We worked on the farmer's market for, uh, gosh, an hour, a year and a half. Went from different boards, different mayor, different administration, we brought it in front of that board. Okay, right. go with it, run with it. So, and, and what, what we also try to do, Deb, is this. We, Bob may head up a committee. Um, Deb may, Candace is, is helping with the uh, Veterans Memorial Wall. The next one, maybe something to do with teens could, could be you. We bring that back to you, we let you kind of run with it. So what you're, what you're allowed to do, absolutely, you can go out and research all you want. You are, you are part of this committee. Committee, um, but again, ultimately, anything that would be legal, financial, would have to go through the department and then back through um, the, the city. Um, but yeah, <coughs> there's a lot of things that, that's happened in the past. We've we've done some things, and and board members will come to me and say, "Well, why are we not moving quick enough? Why are we not getting a community center tomorrow? We right. need why, more information. Why, we right. need more facts. Right. But by all by all means, you bring you all your ideas and your thoughts, and 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 let's put them together and. And you know, it's kind of like we said maybe two, three months ago. Let's even though names and name and the nameplates have changed, this has been a pretty positive board. So let's keep moving the city forward. Um, so absolutely, you, you you can go ask questions. And again, if you're over something, there's nothing wrong with you even getting. I think in in the original situation with with Jason Cole, if you don't mind me using an example, he ran around to all the different uh, farmers markets and he got names and and so on. Candace Bounds has called and got quotes as far as flagpoles and bricks and, and so on. That's to give everyone a, basically a, a ballpark of, of where we're talking to get something done. See, now, that's doable. Yeah. That's doable. And then from there, many things have to go out to bid uh, through right. the city. And as you see now, just with the, with the Veterans Memorial Wall, um, basically we have to get an architect involved, engineer involved, so on. So I hope I've answered your question. I just got long-winded on you there, but oh no, the you have. I just wanted it clarified because there's. I mean, I wanted to talk to different friends of mine in different positions in different cities too to see what they do for their teams no, and see if they have anything, and then maybe I could get some information and some ideas to bring back to, to our our board. In the in the last thing that I'll say is this: <coughs> this board is not under the same. Uh, the sunshine law. In other words, if you have an idea, there's nothing wrong with you picking up the phone calling Deb. Okay, because I'm used okay. to the board of zoning. Appeals, right, right. Something like, like that. No, no, no. Nothing, no. Yeah. Now, if there's something buying uh, that is pending coming up that uh, we're trying to give a favorable or unfavorable recommendation that will come in front of the board of Mayor and Alderman, then, you know, we're going to discuss it at our workshops. And, and if it comes down to a vote, I don't suggest that, you know, we call each other and say, hey, how are you voting on this? But it's not, it's not binding such as you know, a mayor can't call an alderman, or a planning commission can't call another one and say, "How? What do you think about this?" Um, so I hope I've answered that question. Um, anyone want to add to that, uh, Kathy, Mayor? You want to add to any of that? Am I, say, they say it okay. Will you listen? Uh, I missed about half of that. <laughs> okay, I know you tuned me out after a couple words, anyways. <laughs> That's okay. But I think the farmers market is doing a, a, a great. And I think everybody on the board and in our department wants things that are going to be beneficial to the city. Everybody's ideas, of course, aren't going to be the same, but then you have to take all those ideas and pick and choose as a group how you want to move forward with those. So there's, I mean, there's no bad ideas because you may think of something that's a great idea that it never even crossed our minds. Yeah, and, so, and that's the only way we're going to move forward with, with right. any project we take on. Um, the farmer's market, for instance, didn't work at Civic, but so we relocated it, and the, the community is still benefiting from that because we have six to eight vendors every week. There's a waiting list. Um, it continues to grow. Um, so I don't think there's any really bad way to go about a project because you're going to have to have input from everybody. Right, because everybody, I'm sure none of us all have 
the time in every day to just try to do all the research or information gathering that we would want. And I know Parks and Rec, I know y'all have got your hands full too. And I would think that any kind of little information we could find out for you to give to you would be beneficial to the city and to ideas. Okay, good. I'm glad you feel that way. Well, and some ideas that we come up with cost money. And, 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 and they may. We may have to spend money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I like the way you think. <laughs> as long as it's not a lot of money. This is needed. But, yeah, I, I think so. Because I think this small town like this, I think the parks um, is going to be something that's very important to yes, the families here of all ages. Mm, I agree. And not so much as in big cities like Nashville, but in little towns I do think it is. Because I know when I lived in Smyrna and Mount Juliet, the parks were very important. It is a focal point, and at any time... Um, like tonight, you could probably go up there and the park is going to be packed. So we get that use every single day, 90% um, of the year, even in the, in the winter months. That, you're still getting that daily use. There's people you'll see there every day walking, same time like clockwork, whether it's snowing outside, raining, hot, you'll see all those people. Okay. So our, the park is a focal point, and, and we want to take everybody's ideas when we get started a project and combine them and, and put the best product out there for the city. And I was going to ask about dog parks. What somebody said had been brought up before, but then it didn't go through. Didn't go uh, through. I know a lot of people want them. I, I'm a dog lover, and but uh, animal lover anyway. But I, I, I don't, I don't want a dog park personally because I see the negative things that can happen with all the different problems that you know a healthy dog can pick up on things from an unhealthy dog been in a park where there could be some kind of liability or something, but, but I know a lot of people are wanting them for some reason. Well, let me, can I mind me answering this one here? If you just look at the Brookside um, Greenway, um, it's a quarter mile, but I know talking with some friends over there, and there's little doggy stations from in different parts in there, they use that all, all the time. Um, a dog park, at least the one that was proposed, my, my, if I remember correctly, was like almost $400,000. Wow. Now, you wouldn't think that, but there's different things you have to put, bring in there. However, having said that, we have a second phase of our Hurricane Creek Greenway that is coming, and that's going to be much longer. That may be something people could do, and I'm certain we're going to have the little doggy stations and so on along the way where people can stop or drink or water fountains or, or, or whatever that they're going to be in there. That may be something why it's not 100% a doggy park. It's going to be something that, that residents can use. Um, you know, I think what's, what's really happened, the city's grown up. If you, Deb, you know this. It's grown up from 4,000 people to almost 40,000 people pretty quickly. Um, we're we're pr trying to prioritize what we can do, um, what needs to be done. So when you're talking about maybe new infrastructure versus a dog park, I would not you, want four hundred thousand dollars. No, and even if it was two hundred thousand, I mean, my point is, ever. That's what that's what we have to do, and uh, I, I think uh, the mayor's pulling out his hair over here because we've already talked about three million more dollars here in the between the community <laughs> center and the dog park and and, and so on. But uh, <laughs> you know, but they are needed, and hopefully down the road we can we can handle everything and, and catch up to the growth that we had over these years. So. Yeah, hopefully with Walmart plus sales tax coming yeah, in, it's going to help. help help us bring and the in other some retail money. that's coming. Yeah. We won't say any word else about that. So. Okay. <laughs> I can't right now anyway. All right, guys. Well, here's the thing. Next meeting is August 17th. Um, right now, I've got it down as a workshop because we've cha we change we flip flopped. Um, but I think it's on the calendar is still televised. So um, we will send out an email to everybody. Do you have? Uh, yeah, I, they got my email okay. last time, but I didn't get any emails. I looked in my junk email. I looked everywhere, okay. and I did not get an email. In fact, I had to call Bruce because it was conflicting information on the city website to where it's Constable like. Was out. Our administrative assistant that is leaving us was out last week on vacation, and it's very possible Laura just overlooked it because there wasn't somebody sitting right there to guide her through it. Okay. So, but we'll make sure that doesn't happen in the future. Before next month, we'll get that straight. And we'll, well also have it. Down now, at 6 <laughs> we'll have it on there, whether it's a workshop or whether it's televised. Okay, thank so. you.
guys, I just want to thank you all for everything that you do. Um, I hope that you hear it a lot, but probably you don't. Um, well, but maybe one last thing I'll say, before, and then we'll get sir? out of here since you brought that up. We have six full-time guys and one seasonal. And anything that goes on in that park, our guys are pretty much required to be there. We had one guy that pulled probably four weekends straight between two BPA tournaments, his rotation on his weekend, and then the 4th of July. So that's giving up a lot of his family time. And those guys on our crew take pride every single day that they come to work. If you go through the park and everything is in its place, you don't really notice it. But if you go through there and something's out of place or trash is thrown everywhere, then you are, your attention is automatically drawn to that. So I want to say, I want you guys to know, because personally I take pride in having those guys in our department because they work their self to death every single day. And majority of the time, 95% of the time, you go in that park, it, it's pretty clean. It's clean, clean. Compared to so I just wanted to give those guys some recognition because we try to tell them on a daily basis how much they're appreciated, and and I know they're they're glad to hear that. So. And before I adjourn, I just want to echo what you just said. The pride that you all take in it is amazing, and uh, just again, thank you. So, guys, having said that, we will talk um, on April, on August seventeenth, and we will adjourn the meeting.